All right. Peace and blessings of Sapo, the Honorable One, the Success Scholar. Akisha brought me here. Thank you all for tuning in and listening. I want to do this piece. Uh, and I want to talk about the Turner Diaries and these two black judges here. Um, you know, a sister just posted, and I, I, I saw this, but, you know, I, I really thought that I needed to create just an just a inkling of awareness and, and make that connection uh, to the Turner Diaries. But for you all that may not be aware that, uh, that Sheila Abdus Salam, a trailblazing judge from did in the Hudson River, she was um, the African-American woman to serve, the first African-American woman to serve youth in New York State's highest court. A judge described as a trailblazer and a humble pioneer was found dead Wednesday afternoon in the Hudson River. Judge Sheila Abdul Salam was 65 years old. Police responded to a 911 call about a person floating in the Hudson about 145. They found an unconscious, unresponsive woman who was later pronounced dead and identified as Abdul Salam. The medical examiner determined the co- will determine the cause of death and the case is under investigation. Some people have, uh, they've, uh, Judge Kumo, I'm sorry, Governor Kumo appointed her, held her as a trailblazer, jurist whose life is a public service, suit more than fair and just New York for all. She had been reporting missing by her husband uh, Tuesday, by CNN. I mean, um, Tuesday. Um, so. They, she leaves a lasting impact, leaves a lasting impact from a time in the legal services attorney fighting on behalf of low income families for her, as a, her tenure to the first African American woman to preside on the state's highest court. So she presided on the state's highest court. Now, I'm making this connection to the Turner Diaries for a reason, and let me just share another one. Let me just share those. People can call it Black Judge Shot. Well, Mr. Allen, one, one of the things I want to get into depth is uh, really the uh, absolutely awesome job. Um, Chicago man charged with murder. Now, again, I don't know what's the deal, but let me just. This was a case of Chicago. And again, now it could be a, a Chicago man has been charged with first degree in connection with shooting Jeffra. Joshua Smith was also charged with first degree. Judge Miles was killed Monday outside of his home, 52 year old woman. Now, these could be these could be separate incidents. Incidents as Chief Detective Melissa said a surveillance a video from home surveillance played a key role in tracking down a car believed to be used in the attempted at robbery. Cameras called a license plate of the vehicle. Police said the couple was targeted. We do not believe the attempted robbery is random. Nor do we believe Smith acted alone, Staples said. And then a shooter, the shooting was not connected to Miles being a judge. Hmm. Okay. So if it was arrested after going to police station to be questioned, he has a bail hearing on Thursday. Staples will not say whether the police thinks Smith, who has served six years in prison for armed robbery, was the gunman. All right. So... Uh, I just wanted to, you know, that's really interesting. I mean, you know, uh, I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but while we just said it, we, we should be aware of the Turner Diaries. Now, let me just, uh, for those who may not know what the Turner Diaries are, but I had, I know I still have that book somewhere. I have three houses that I'm actually have stuff at so uh, but I think the Turner Diaries at my house in Baltimore right? but yeah, yeah. Turner Diaries is a 1978 novel by William Pierce he was the founder of National Alliance I recall that and it's published under the uh, pseudonym uh, Andrew McDonald Turner Diaries depicts a violent revolution in the United States which leads to the overthrow of the federal government nuclear war and ultimately a race war all groups opposed by the office, such as Jews, gays, and non-whites, are exterminated. Now, 
I think we need to look at that, who some people are considering uh, to, for extermination, Jews, gays, and all whites now. You know, uh, we, we have to understand that, whether um, we totally agree with every group that this is, this is what you call white nationalism. Uh, and that's some of the white nationalists don't agree with what white nationalism is. The book described it as explicitly racist and anti-Semitic by the New York Times and has been labeled as a Bible of the racist right by the Southern Poverty Law Center. As a cultural architect, the Derek Times Diaries is a political fiction that presents the means by which white nationalism, i.e. white separatism and eugenics can be established with a race war against the perceived non-white enemies. So political influence. The Anti-Defamation League is identified Turner Diaries is probably the most widely read book among the far right extremists. Many of them have cited in their inspiration for, behind their terrorist attacks, organizing activities. More of the Simon Wiesenthal Center calls it a hate book. Initially, Turner Diaries was exclusively sold by mail order and, and uh, published in serial chapters format in National Alliance publications. As of the year 2000, more than 500,000 copies of Turner Diaries have been sold. All right. So, this is a pretty popular book, um, and again, I don't know if those, uh, if the, the, these judges were victims of that. It could be certainly isolated incidences, but, you know, it's, it's just something uh, for us to be aware of in this country that, you know, you're, you're, you're existence in life may not necessarily be guaranteed and it's no it's not necessarily uh, all people are, are you know out to be a part of these different movements but we know that that um, you know sometimes people are emboldened by political um, movements you know to that to that degree you know where, where people are are inspired to to want to take things to various levels of extremism and so you know I for one have to be conscious of, of many different things uh, to to really understand the power dynamics uh, within this country and how people are able to survive so I say continue to support and continue to pay attention to what's going on around you um, you know we never know what is going on, uh, but you know that we have to realize that uh, there are things happening around us that people simply do not want you to be around or want you to be on the planet. So they create these uh, conditions where you know they expect for you to not live. So that's all I have. I'm out. Peace.